And let's go to Marsha. Good morning, Marsha. Hi. Marsha, uh, do you have any experience with hemochromatosis at all? Oh, yes. Actually, we do. Um, my dad uh, was discovered with it in probably around 1999, 2000. Uh, just by chance, his doctor, he was having some troubles with different things, and uh, his doctor uh, recommended this blood test, so he had it done, and he found out he has had it, has it. and he was about... Uh, Oh, let me see. He would be about 70 at the time, I think, uh, 68, 69 in there. And uh, he ended up dying in 2002 with different complications, but they did believe that hemochromatosis probably um, had some some implications in his death. But they, they didn't really tell us how much or they didn't go into it, but um, they figured that there was something wrong with his heart, enough wrong with his heart that it that could have been the hemochromatosis that... that uh, contributed to his death now and, of course that brings on the question of the genetic link and that's right. where you come in yes after he was tested the uh his doctor recommended that his children get tested so i went to my doctor and um he took the or i went and got the test done and uh i am a carrier and i think my sisters i have two sisters and i think they are carriers too if i'm not mistaken but anyway then our my husband and i have two daughters and they're in their early 30s and actually, they have been uh, diagnosed with it. They both have hemochromatosis. So my husband must be a carrier as well, although he has never been tested for it. And I guess when we look at that, Bob Rogers, and we think, well, can you imagine the odds? But I guess when you're looking at the numbers out there, the odds are not that great. I mean, it's, there's a potential there for two people linking up with this. We disease. see this uh, pattern all the time, and um, and it. it we hear about it in our office. We uh, people write into us uh, from our website at uh, uh, too much iron dot ca, uh, t o o much iron dot ca, um, and and we uh, we love to hear these stories because if we can find one person in a family who has this disorder, we can help save an entire family. And and that's our goal. Our goal is to try and create so much awareness about this that uh, we can save a lot of people from suffering, needless suffering and dying. So, Marcia, what are you doing? What are you doing about this to, pr- to protect yourself and also... Well, since I'm children? just a carrier, I don't have any symptoms. Like, I'm, I'm just a carrier. And uh, I don't know whether my husband has it or not. He's never been tested. So he could get tested for it, and, and he might be have full-blown um, hemochromatosis. I don't know. He doesn't really have any symptoms for it, but... Uh, Anyway, my two daughters, actually, they ended up, they were patients of Dr. Adams that, that you have on there at one time. They, in their early, or I should say late teens and early 20s, they were in college and so on, and they went down to see him, and he, they were giving blood and so on. And, and uh, my second daughter, she's kind of let it slide. I don't think she's doing too much about it right now, but uh, I have to remind her again to, to start giving blood again. But my older daughter, she pretty regularly gives blood. Marsha, do you know if your uh, daughters um, and your family are members of our society? No, we're not. We'd sure like you to be, and, and this is why. We send out a newsletter twice a year. Oh, yeah. Um, we also uh, send out an electronic uh, newsletter called The Magnet uh, every f- um, five times a year. Oh. And in, and in this, we update as much of the research and as much of the knowledge as we know about this disorder. Uh, and uh, it would just be great if you could... Uh, inform them um I, uh, you can do it through our website at too much iron.ca too much or iron.ca. yeah too much iron.ca or our uh phone number is um uh, and and now i've just got to remind myself it's one eight seven seven bad iron one eight seven seven bad iron yes that's right that's a toll-free <laughs> number anywhere in canada and uh, we'd we'd love you to be members we'd love you to be a part of spreading the awareness because in this listening area i think uh it, it, the number one in 227 is in the general population everyone in canada mm-hmm. when you take this listening area it's a much higher oh number. i know my do- the doctor told my dad that uh it's 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 a lot more common than than he than you would ever think and uh like our ancestors are english irish uh scottish you know way back there and she said at the time that it was the northern european that uh seemed to be the largest 
uh, descendants from there. I have a director on my board. His name is Pat McParland, uh, Irish, and he is a, a, a brother. Has, he's uh, seven siblings in this family. He's uh, the lone brother of and six sisters. All of the six sisters in this family have hemochromatosis, and he's a carrier. Oh, well. Uh, Dr. Adams, let me ask you this, um, and this may sound like a foolish question, but I'm not a man of medicine. We do know that uh, often babies will have, well, they'll have jaundice when they're born. Yeah. Is that in any way a uh, suggestion that there, there might be something going on there? No, uh, that's a normal phenomena seen in all babies, and it usually resolves in the first 48 hours. It's more common in premature babies. It's really an immaturity of the the enzymes that are normally part of the liver system. So that's not really an indication. Just to comment on uh, the caller's story, if if her father had classical hemochromatosis, which it sounds like he did, then she will be definitely a carrier, as will all her siblings, because they would have got one of the abnormal genes from her father. So then for her children to have classical hemochromatosis, it means the father must carry a gene as well. At least one gene. Yeah, he, that's he right. May have, he, he may have so, both. And in terms of the probability here, if you marry a Caucasian person, a Northern European type person, the chance of being a carrier is about 1 in 10. Now that varies uh, in uh, certain regions, for example, in Dublin, Ireland, the chance of being a carrier is one in four. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, uh, you know, historically, uh, there are regions of Ontario where many of the settlers were Irish descent or Dutch descent or British descent, and these clusters sort of continue on through the generations. Uh, and, you know, from that point of view, many people, particularly in rural areas, are actually part of some founder family from Europe. And this also applies to Australia being an island. The, it, it's very common hemochromatosis in Australia. Uh, occasionally someone comes in and says, well, does this mean that I should marry a black person or a Chinese person? <laughs> and, you know, we're not in the marriage broker business. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those of us of Irish descent, despite, despite our vagaries and so on, and that, the fact of the matter is we do have a higher risk <laughs> of having hemochromatosis. Yeah. Um, Marcia, thanks so much for joining us. By the way, Marcia, you mentioned that uh, one of your daughters has sort of let things slide a little bit. Dr. Yeah. Adams, is that a good idea? Well, you know, women are less affected than men with this. And so there are some women that get away with this without even needing any treatment. So, uh, you know, probably we would recommend that the person have an iron test like a ferritin done once a year. And you can kind of uh, predict the future after you measure the iron test without treatment over several years. And if someone is just very slowly accumulating, they may be able to get by by becoming a voluntary blood donor uh, several times per year, and this helps somebody else. And this was one of the things that the Canadian Hemochromatosis Society was very instrumental in getting changed in Canada in 1991. They uh, lobbied to get these rules changed, and they didn't change in the U.S. until much later. So now a, a healthy hemochromatosis person can be a voluntary blood donor. They have to abide by the same rules as any blood donor, meaning they can only donate once every 56 days and have to be tested for all the other infections and so on. But this has been a good thing because certainly there's always a shortage of blood. And, and, and if I if, if, if I have need a blood transfusion and the blood given me is from a hemochromatosis patient, I take it if I don't have hemochromatosis, I'm just getting a nice shot of iron-rich blood, right? And it's, uh, you are, but uh, you know you may not know that when they when they process blood for transfusion, they 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 filter it and they wash it, and the the so-called serum, which sort of looks like apple juice surrounding blood, is taken off. And that serum is what contains most of the circulating iron. So you're not getting as much iron as you might think. Marcia, thanks for the call. Continued good health to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this morning.